Ben, how's it going? It's going well. Uh, That's so great. Far, I think my finals are probably around the third week. Uh, December. You know those finals, how pesky they can be. <laughs> agreed, bro. Yeah. Agreed. Dude, I got no, two finals no. on Sunday. Not oh my it. gosh. I'm so sorry for you, man. Uh, at least it's not three. It was about to be three. I just uh-huh. have a ton of group projects that we haven't done any work for. So. Yep. I'm, oh I'm on the same boat, too. Like okay, what are your thoughts at the same on time too? group projects? Pros and cons? Pros, Pros in a group? Con, it's a project. Yeah. <laughs> am I right or am I right? Okay, so... Yeah, right about that. Uh, yeah, I was we'll about get, to say, group projects in, a, in Baruch, kind of rough. <laughs> okay, so we'll get started in a couple minutes, everyone. So for now, just you know, grab some popcorn, you know, get your beverages, and uh, yeah. Yeah, we're giving everyone right. some time to kind of join in. We do have the thing to start at 1230, so... We're just letting you guys in now so that we can yeah, get adjusted yeah. and comfortable. And also, we have a fun game of Kahoot at the end. So, you know, oh, yeah. we're going to be competing for a nice $25. In, what is it? Amazon gift card? Yeah, Amazon. Yeah, yeah. So no, stay no, till finals, no finals here yet, but my math lab is making me regret that the computer was ever invented. So, uh, oh, relatable. relatable. Oh, hold on. Let's I also agree. In. Let's see who else we got over here. What's up, Larry? How's it going? Good, good. How are you? Chilling, chilling. I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad you could make it. Uh, I, I hope your friend is coming too. I, me- I remember you guys from the uh, the the GIM. I'm just sending him the link right now because he's not on the. He's not a member yet. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, remember that? Um, not yet, but around the middle of the um, workshop, I'm going to be sending out a sign-in sheet. So for whoever also needs to complete their membership, like uh, two events attendance, I'll send be sending that out, and I'll keep reminding everyone in chat. So keep an eye out on it. Okay, so we'll give people um like five more minutes to keep yeah. joining in, and then we will get started. Yeah, there will be a sign-in sheet uh, towards the middle of the um of the workshop. Uh, yes, Patrick, there will be a sign-in sheet. I'll be sending it out, and I'll keep reminding. So don't worry about it. Gotcha. So how's everyone's Tuesday going? I got a busy day ahead of me. I'm going very Tuesday and a busy Tuesday. Oh, who do you have in the World Cup, Patrick? Argentina. Argentina. Uh, damn. I'm sure you must have been really happy after the first game. <laughs> I'm rooting for Argentina, too, so. Yeah. What, what, what are the odds you guys think that U.S. will make it out of group? If U.S. wins against Iran today, we're in. <laughs> no chance. No chance. <laughs> USA, USA. Bro, the team that play, that calls football soccer is advancing, bro. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. <laughs> USA. <laughs> I like how you even yeah, have football. the freaking football. Football. <laughs> love football. I love it when they score touchdowns in the World Cup. The U.S. has a young lineup. I don't know. It all depends on the game. Funny enough, in half an hour, I guess, whoever's watching the World Cup, you guys are probably going to be watching the World Cup instead of this workshop yeah, while we're this doing is it. Actually a, this is actually a... Uh, yeah, it's a watching World party. Cup. World Cup. Uh, it's a, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a viewing party. Yeah. Viewing party. Oh, World Cup waiting room. Hell yeah. Rugby plus plus. <laughs> Derek's onto something. Yeah. Okay, guys, just three more minutes. We're going to get right into this. So, you know, let all your friends know, like, the workshop of the year is starting. You know, don't, uh, which one call it? 20 people. Oh, okay. We got a few more. Okay, 25. Um, okay. Go Cowboys. Yeah. Indeed. Hmm. 
<laughs> that is very true. <laughs> <Super Wiley. laughs> I don't know. The, the game that's about to play is actually pretty interesting because, like, Iran hasn't been doing bad. They actually beat Wales, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, guys, so I guess we're going to get started. All right, so everyone strap in. Uh, Pilar, hey, are you guys ready? Yep. Okay, let's get to it. Um, okay, I mean, we can begin with some introductions. Um, so you may know Eric from last uh, cyber event uh, back in October, but we got a few new additions. Uh, my name is Pilar. I am the Director of Cybersecurity for AIS. Um, I am currently a senior majoring in, oh my God, guess what? Cybersecurity. Um, and I will be graduating hopefully in the spring of 2023. And I'll pass it on to Eric. Hello, everyone. Uh, hopefully, uh, well, I do see a lot of familiar faces here from the past workshop. Um, my name is Eric Mayakov. I'm the uh, associate for cybersecurity. Um, you know, a little bit about me. I love computers, <laughs> you know, coding, hacking, all this cool stuff. You know, that's, that's, I'm, I'm your guy for that, right? Um, yeah, so graduating this, this December, hopefully, right? So um, I think this is actually my, my last workshop that I'll be hosting. You know, maybe when I'm a like multimillionaire or cybersecurity guy, I'll come back as a like an honored guest to do some more workshops. But but yeah, that's a little for me. All right. And then I would be Harry. I am also a fellow associate in the cybersecurity uh, section of the AIS club and another major in cybersecurity as well. Um, truthfully, I myself don't know why I went into cybersecurity. Some of you may also be in that position. But it's more so of like, it kind of sticks with you when you look into like tech jobs, because it's such a wide field as it stands. So supposing that since all of you are also attending it here, you also have that interest in mind. So without further ado, I suppose I should start showing us the slides. You suppose correctly. Let's get into this. All right. Let's get this party started. So starting off with the very obvious of what you've signed up for today is that we are going to be going over ransomware and how we can prevent it from pretty much affecting our entire life because this is obviously something that happens in situations where we take it for granted where it doesn't directly come to us specifically but out there the odds are it might come to you eventually whether you know it or not so and, and one thing if i could just jump in for a sec so yeah. um for the the our presentation say we're going to be focusing on how ransomware affects you on an individual level right so exactly what harry was saying you know we hear about solar winds we hear about wanna cry right and we hear about how companies lose these millions of dollars but um i i think it's also actually scary when you have to deal with it yourself so we hope to show you that yeah so thank you eric so very basic thing before we start going into very in-depth stuff we're going to start off with malware now you might ask yourself what exactly is malware and that is like you know those things where you hear like trojan horse virus and like the viruses like those that are on your computer and then usually when you see those ads that are like "Ooh, new hot jobs near you that are waiting and stuff like that it those are most likely viruses such as malware waiting to just go into your files and steal data so another funny thing is that unlike you know disease which is like sometimes natural to just happen as an infection in computers this is not a natural phenomenon this is man-made only so there is never something such as a natural virus 
which is just like randomly so happened to come into your computer. It was intended to do that by someone else with ulterior motives. So another thing that I'm going to touch up on is the different types of malware. I'm not going to go crazy in depth with it because this isn't really the main uh, thing about this workshop, but I believe it's very good for you guys to have kind of a knowledge about it because a major thing about cybersecurity is having the knowledge of things you need to be aware of in this field. So very, as shown by this wonderful uh, image that I found online, we have, you know, the virus, adware, rootkit, spyware, ransomware, which is today's topic, Trojan horse, um, and then like remote access worm and keylogger. These are all types of malware that will affect you down the road if you aren't aware of what you are clicking on, especially. And then also downloading, because remember, if it is something on the internet, it is possible to be a malware, whether it be something you download or something you click on. It is very easy to get in once you make that one simple mistake. So why it is made is one thing you might be asking yourself. And it is a very simple reason. It's not really, you know, rocket science. Why would someone go out of their way to just uh, make someone else miserable, right? It all comes down to wanting to gain something, whether it be the, ind the individual's motives can vary, but it usually comes down to wanting information that shouldn't be given out to the public, essentially, um, or getting a ransom, which is the specialty of ransomware. But bottom line is you don't really see that happen too often with like everyday people, let's say like ourselves. Ransomware usually target more so companies, which is what we're going to talk, uh, which is what we're going to talk about uh, as it stands, which is how we go into the whole premise of how we can stop ransomware because it also targets us, but more so big name companies. So what is ransomware? You may ask yourself. So the general bottom line is that they encrypt files that a company has, for example, whether it be like their economic uh, status or like an, any data that they would not want to be put out in public, they get access to it and then they encrypt it. So they lock you out from the actual data that you should have as ready access. So it ends up being a major problem, right? And then once that happens, you have obviously the ransom that is asked in favor of it, where it's like, oh, you know, we have taken your data. So if you don't want this data to kind of leak out or in fact, at least have access to it again, you're going to have to pay us some moolah in order to get it back. So going over a few real life examples as well later on um, before that, though. Um, in general, there's like crypto ransom. Locker ransom, scareware, uh, ransomware, as, uh, ransomware as a service, and docsware, leakware. These are all things that like vary in terms of how they will affect you. But for the most part, I wouldn't worry about it. It would be more so like things that companies really worry about. So once you start working in one, that's when you can start really worrying about these types of things. And then we got a few real life cases. So we have Ryuk. And in fact, Ryuk got targeted twice is what's the unfortunate thing. And I like, I don't know about you guys, but I kind of find that humorous because in 2019, they got hit by a ransomware attack. And then in 2020, after they already had like resolved the first time, they got hit by it again. So that was just a double whammy on their part. And then WannaCry, which I guess was the state of their being as a company when they got attacked by ransomware, was in 2017, and then Jigsaw in 2016. And now you may ask yourself, well, how did they even manage to like get through it? And that would be decryption. Once the, the, the very simple answer to ransomware is decrypting, right? But how do you decrypt something? You need to find the key the solution key. So once um, they had managed to find that key, they ended up making a code that would force input the key into it. And then it would allow them to unlock their files back. 
that is essentially the bottom line of it. Obviously, there's a lot more technical aspects to it, but this is just like a more rounded way of summarizing how they got down to it. And now you may ask yourself, how do we defend against the attacks ourselves so that we don't end up having this situation happen in our life? Very first line of defense is your Windows Defender. Have you ever gotten that notification at your corner where it says like, oh, your computer has been scanned and no threats have been found or zero viruses have been inputted? That is your Windows Defender doing its job. So luckily, so long as you see that and always says nothing has been found, great job. You have not managed to infect your computer yet. So that is the first very line of defense. But if you're feeling like you should want to be a little extra precautious with it, you can get a secondary um, like line of defense in a way, which is like getting um, like those paid for cyber like security, like firewalls and stuff like that. Um, so those are like Bitdefender and Sophos, which are um, uh, so Bitdefender is like a Romanian cybersecurity tech company. Meanwhile, Sophos is a British based uh, security software and hardware company. And they both just offer ways for you to defend your system a bit more securely than just having your Windows Defender. And then after that, another way you can defend, defend yourself against these attacks is by promoting uh, cybersecurity awareness. So, you know, things like not clicking any links you see, not accepting uh, any job invitations by emails of Elon Musk telling you, oh, we got a job position open and I want you in it. So that those are general steps that you can take to kind of secure yourself away from it. But then also updating your operating system. That is very important because updating your operating system also makes sure that the programming is up to date and also that it's compatible with itself in order for it to be able to keep, let's say, like the, the train going so that it continues to operate smoothly without any issues. And that is pretty much how I would say is best for us to defend ourselves from these attacks on an individual level. And that is that is it for me for now. OK, so thank you very much for that, Harry. Um, OK, so now let's get into the fun part of this workshop. Right. So um, I actually have a confession to make. So all of you may know me as, you know, Eric Mike of mild mannered cybersecurity associate. But actually, what I'd like to tell you is that I'm actually part of anonymous, the evil hacker group. Our methods are unknown. Um, uh, I forget what Anonymous says, but anyways, I can't see shit in this thing, sorry. But anyways, um, so the way we're gonna do this is I'm gonna perform a, uh, a phishing uh, attack uh, on our lovely host, uh, Pilar. So let me just share my screen and then we will get to it. Yeah, and yes, I know, I know, please contain your surprise. I'm actually uh, a secret member of Anonymous. So here we go. So first things first, right? This is just the initial setup, right? Um, I'm going to be sending Pilar the ransomware that she's going to be working with in her system. So over here, we can see we have an executable file for Windows uh, called super evil ransomware.exe. Very innocuous, very inconspicuous. If you look at this, you probably wouldn't guess what it is. But um, this is actually a version of the ransomware that I built in the previous session. So for, for those of you who remember, you know, this should be a little familiar for you. But uh, the way that I'm going to be uh, sending over the ransomware is uh, using something called uh, a, fi a, a phishing attack. So basically, a phishing attack is impersonating some uh, reputable source or company and uh, trying to uh, infiltrate a person's system with this, like, you know, uh, quote unquote, like uh, like reputation, right? So the way we're gonna do it is this way. So Pilar is an avid video game player. She loves League of Legends, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna craft a phishing email from like the creators of League of Legends, right? And um, we're gonna do that using the software called Fish Mailer. So Fish Mailer is like this open source uh, phishing template generator. So it's basically gonna give us an HTML file that we're gonna embed into an email to Pilar to um, yeah, to basically try to fool her, right? So first things first, we're gonna do Python fish, oops, fish mailer. And here we go, checking for updates. All righty. Okay, so this this is the, the first tool we're gonna be looking at on the, on the evil side. So as we know, uh, or as I was informed very recently, uh, League of Legends is maintained by uh, Riot Games, right? 
So we're going to use uh, that template that's already built in. So um, another thing too, so uh, now we're going to enter the target username. Like we need this information to basically make it more, uh, you know, as realistic as possible. So I, I think Pilar told me that her username was something like uh, sweaty gamer 2002. Is that, is that right, Pilar? Are you sweaty gamer 2002? Okay. That, that looks familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now uh, the phishing URL. So this is the most important part. So um, we can't just go ahead and attach super evil ransomware that exe right into an email, right? Because Outlook uh, Web is going to like, is going to block it. But the way we're going to go about it is this. So on my Google Drive, I've actually attached um, the super evil ransomware that exe as a league of legends. You know, my, my typing is what it used to be. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the link for this, right? So copy link, and we're going to paste it into here, into enter your phishing URL, right? Okay, let's press enter. Um, I think Polar plays on North American servers. Six, uh, enter name on HTML file to save. So this is going to be the output file. We're going to call it like uh, my <clears throat> phishing template. Template. Okay, HTML file created. So uh, we're gonna have to do a few changes to this template to make it a little bit more realistic. So as we see, ta-da, this is the output. So password change request. We've received a password change request for your Riot Games account. This link will expire in 24 hours, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Sweaty Gamer 2002. And um, so we're gonna be changing this template, right? But if we were trying to fool someone with a, a fake password request, you would click on this link here, it would take them to our, our uh, uh, URL over here and they'd say, oh, League of Legends, I guess this is like a alternative installer or something. You know, they would download it and boom, infiltration just like that. So uh, to save a little bit of time, I actually do have um, a, uh, an updated version of the template over here. And as you can see, oh, 2003. So as you can see, this one's a little bit better, right? So I'll explain why. So we have received an alert for suspicious activity on your account. This link will expire in 24 hours. Please download this alternative launcher or your account will be terminated. So hopefully, Pilar's not been listening to me, right? Uh, you know, this is just us talking, right? So don't, 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 let, don't let Pilar know. So when she goes to click on uh, this link to download the alternative launcher from, you know, security.riotgames.com, looks legit to me. I don't know, guys. She's going to go over here, uh, press download, and then boom, just like that, we're going to get the malware on her system, right? So let's go ahead and actually send this uh, email to Pilar. So um, what is Pilar's email? Oh, I forgot. Pilar, what's your email again? Uh, oh, okay. Never mind. We got it. We got it. So one thing that I'm not going to do, and so it's uh, I don't make all of you very good hackers. So right now, um, when Polar gets this email, it's going to be from, you know, eric.mycobruchmail.com. What a good hacker would actually do, and that what you guys are not going to do, is uh, they would create like a fake domain, like a proxy domain that they're sending this phishing link from, right? So right now, it's not very realistic, but, you know, you know don't, don't do this. So, um, okay, so subject, we're going to say uh, critical security alert alert let's not include any obvious typos which is a, a sign of a phishing email critical security alert uh lol, league of legends so lol lol account has been hacked or something we can say that right so um the way we're actually going to embed this template into the uh, into the email is not the I'm, I'm sure there's better ways to do this right but um, here's how we're going to do it, right? So the first thing that I'm going to do, actually, is um, I'm going to open up uh, the actual source code for the uh, the phishing uh, HTML file that we just made. So as we can see over here, this link will expire. Download this alternative launcher, right? So the first thing I'm going to do, we're going to copy all of our data from here, right? I'm going to bring this back. And again, I'm sure this is not the best way to do this, but this is the only way I can find it. So, we're gonna put some sample text into the body of our of our message. We're, we're gonna click on inspect, right? It's gonna bring us to wherever it is. So as you can see, sample text. So next I'm gonna do, I'm gonna right click, edit, edit as HTML, and then that part where it says sample text, we're just gonna replace with our source code. So we just press control V, 
we click out of it. Please work. Ooh, hold on. <laughs> oh, there we go. I was getting worried for a second. And ta-da, we now have embedded our evil template. So um, I'm gonna send uh, I'm gonna send this email. Um, hopefully it doesn't get flagged, and I'm gonna pass it over to Pilar. So hopefully she's not been listening this entire time, so she doesn't know what we're up to. So okay, I'm gonna send that over and stop my share. Send, and there we go. Okay, over to Pilar. Okay, hey guys, I think I just got like they cut out for like a little bit. Did you guys get any emails? Um, I I got an email from a. Uh, from League of Legends just now. Did you guys see that? Oh, Paul, did you wait. get something too? I I think so. <laughs> oh, okay. Could you share your screen and maybe show it yeah, to us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, one quick question. Um, someone asked, can it be auto downloaded? So it can be. Um, but that would require setting up like your own web server and putting like up your own custom HTML. So right now, you know, we don't want to make it super sophisticated. So. Um, we're going to try to use our social engineering to get Pilar to, to download this, but it can be, but for, for, for right now, it's not. Okay. Ah. Yeah, that's okay. a weird, whoa. Yeah, a it's weird. a really weird email. Yeah, but I mean, I, I don't, I mean, I don't want like suspicious activity on my account. Yeah, right. That's kind of yeah. weird. Yeah, and that is my username and it does say Riot Games. So yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I guess click on the link. That's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seems legit. Yeah, seems legit, right? <laughs> oh, it's weird that's coming up in like a Google Drive. <laughs> oh, oh, I guess this, this yeah. is a comp. This is their company Google Drive. Like, this oh, is just something they have up, right? oh, I yeah. thought they would have like more sophisticated, like you know, cloud. But yeah, no, this yeah, I, I think this makes sense. Happens. Yeah, this makes sense. Just click download. Huh? Oh, that's, that's okay. I mean, it's League of Legends after all. I don't think. Yeah, I mean, it says League of Legends here. Yeah, it's a small indie, so, uh, small indie company. What do you I mean? mean? I don't, small indie company. Yeah, yeah for right. sure. Yeah, yeah. No, let's just download anyways. So you can see that here, here already, that like Google Drive and um, pretty much scans the exact virus, and then also here as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> so with a virus like this, um, yeah. So Outlook and Google are able to. Um, kind of detect when a virus is embedded in a system. Um, and then here we see we got two already two security alerts from the system already. Um, it's not commonly downloaded, maybe dangerous. It just says may though. Again, so it might may be dangerous. Maybe dangerous. Right. Maybe dangerous. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and keep that then. All right. Let me just look at my folders that I have here. Um, just get prepared for some, yeah, for some epic gaming faker guide, All right? Yeah, just just checking, yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah, that's good too. I just need that like affirmation. Um, Yumi scripts. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, favorite fruits, just in case. Yeah, I forget. Um, oh, I already opened that one. Verified boosters. Okay, okay. So everything's good here. I think I can start launching the new league. Um. Don't forget to put it on oh. your desktop. <laughs> Whoa, comes equipped Whoa. with the League of Legends icon too. Oh, okay. Wow. I, I guess this, they updated the the. This the, has to be legit. Yeah, I I believe so. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead and open this. What is this? Protect oh. your PC. I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't really trust Windows in in terms of this. I mean, I think it's fine, right? Like it. It said like you know, write games on the email. So it should be fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, I'm just going to run into this anyways. Oh. Ha! Quantum! Oh. You really ah. thought, you really thought oh my that God. was a League of Legends launcher? Ha! Files encrypted. Ha. Ha, 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 ha. I wish I got Quantum. an alert for that. Ha! What? Yeah, you'll that never guess crazy. the key now. Okay, so the, the hacker's wait, part wait. is done. Okay, so I'll be quiet now. I mean, let me, <laughs> let me just make sure that each file is, is okay. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, it seems that a lot of my files are encrypted. I must have gotten hacked or so. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can hear that like Outlook and, or we already got the email from Outlook. Um, all these files were already encrypted um, like instantly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um 
well, he didn't actually provide me any, you know, sort of ransom, but <laughs> yeah, um, it's just the evil. But... It's just the evil version. Um, in terms of in the in this case, right? So we're gonna go to our trusty security, and we didn't get any alerts here either, where we can do a quick scan. So this is using Windows Defender. Um, this is a built-in, um, like built-in, I guess, feature of Windows. Um, I believe it was on Windows 10 and Windows 11 as well. Uh, it comes pre-installed, pretty much serves as uh, the default antivirus for uh, any Windows uh, operating system. So let's see if they picked it up at all. Might take some time to scan. No current threats. Nice. Wow. That they did it actually did a great job. Yeah. That <laughs> there are actually no threats at all. Um, so we can go through scan. We can see, we can do a full scan again just to make sure that they didn't miss anything, just to make sure that my computer is definitely safe. Um, <laughs> which it probably is. I don't see anything wrong with any of the folders on my computer. Clearly it's doing its job. Clearly it's doing its job. Looks like it. But okay, so let's let's drop the, the facade. So I actually have been working with Pilar and I've given mm -hmm. her the, the ransom key. So Pilar, if you could just try to type in like some random stuff to try to decrypt it. So try like sure. password one or password two or whatever. So that stuff does not look like it's working, but um, hmm. yeah, you, you, can, you can use I, the, the key that I gave what you. What if I just try like this random? Yeah, just try some random characters, honestly. See if that okay. works. Yeah. Yeah. Let me try that out. How did you get that key? Whoa. Oh. Files fully decrypted. See you next time. Oh, awesome. man. What? Wait, so that, that means your files are back? Oh, dude, come on. I think so. Oh, okay. We're back in. Okay, cool. Awesome. Right. Okay. So one of the features in Windows Defender is something called protected file access. So if we go to virus and threats, we go to manage ransomware protection, we can turn on controlled folder access. So we can select some, that's crazy. Okay, there we go. So we can select specific folders to um, protect. So all those files were embedded into my folder, right? So you can select this folder to protect everything in my folder, if it lets me. All right, awesome. So my folder is now protected. I'm gonna go ahead and run the ransomware again, just to see what will happen. We'll test that. <laughs> unhandled execution okay let's try that again i mean it looks like windows defender is doing its job yeah now it, it is actually doing its job <laughs> <laughs> So you can see that my files are still okay. They're still certainly what they were to begin with. Um, but wait, so, you know, wait, so even when Windows Defender me, was on. Hmm? What you're telling me is that an option on Windows Defender called uh, <gasps> ransomware protection access basically protects your computer files from it's being hit insane, by ransomware? It's actually. Huh. Yes. If I were you, I would be writing this down everyone watching <laughs> because uh one, one thing too so like it may seem that the ransomware that i provided is like pretty silly you know like we've put a league of legends icon on it but like um if it were to be like refactored and actually deployed like on a corporate environment there would be little that people could actually do if they didn't have the key uh someone mentioned uh using a, a, a ghidra or some other mm -hmm. reverse engineering technique and uh i mean if if you have a supercomputer then yeah you probably could but like if you're uh, just trying to crack, uh, find a decryption key like on like a 
even a mildly powered powerful uh, gaming laptop you know you're, you're going to be going at it for like a few days like at, at minimum right so um you know the most important thing protect yourself before you get attacked not the other way around right yeah, yeah i mean we want to be preventative in every measure uh windows defender does do a, like a okay job of defending against some ransomware and then even with um the protected or controlled file access uh you are able to select those files to uh never be changed so even if you want to um you know delete it it can't be deleted right um windows defender does many more things as well so it gives you real time threat detection it didn't detect it there um, which is insane um and we'll get into that a little bit later some of the issues and uh some of the critiques of window defender as well windows defender as well uh it gives you firewall protection as well so i'm going to turn this on um click yes to that uh, gives you protection against phishing, phishing sites, allegedly, right? Uh, system per performance reports as well. It'll provide you with, um, you know, pretty much reports. I think the premium version of Windows Defender also uh, allows this as well. Gives you hardware security. And then I believe they just implemented like par parental controls too. And then, uh, of, of course, the protected file access. So you can see that all of the files were um, still what they were to begin with, right? Um, However, there are a lot of critiques of Windows Defender. Um, first of all, meaning that it takes a lot of your CPU. So when this is running, when you're being attacked, um, this may slow down like other processes in your network. And that's like pretty much a main reason why people don't rely on Windows Defender. Plus it's free and it's like people are skeptical of free stuff. Um, so oftentimes they'll opt for something called like Bitdefender, um, another big one is Sophos or Norton. Um, and those ones are uh, a little bit more advanced. They're not pre-installed, you have to pay for them. Um, there's a ton of more features in Bitdefender. Uh, Bitdefender gives you like a rescue environment an early boot scan. Ideally, I would have shown you guys uh, Bitdefender, but I wasn't able to get a free version of it. Um, so, but yeah, um, I'm gonna move on to our next segment of trying uh, different ransomware against my computer as well. So we're gonna go ahead and open this one. So this is called a sim, this is uh, no, this is from a company known as No Before. So this package pretty much runs multiple um, levels of ransomware, or sorry, ransomware and like other viruses against uh, my computer. Um, before I run this, I want to make sure that everything looks good on Windows Defender's end, make sure everything is enabled, right? So we'll go to virus and threat protection, if it loads. <laughs> oh, also another important thing uh, to consider in a ransomware attack are your backups, right? Um, even if you don't work for an organization on an individual, yeah, okay, we knew that. Oh, I think, what is this? I oh, was kidding. Okay, this is from this. But anyways, so um, yeah, so even if you don't work for an organization or you aren't part of an organization, um, having like a backup system, uh, in a particular an offline back backup system, allows for you to um, kind of recover your files in like a safer way. Uh, it's also important to archive your, your files, right? Um, archive exactly like the inactive files that we have. And um, that'll, you know, will one speed up the process of archiving files that, you know, you actually need and we're spending time in recovering those. And then it also protects your files as well. Um, we can look at the Windows Server backup. Uh, don't ignore this. I was doing it last night and then I canceled it. <laughs> but um, so you can provide like a backup schedule, right? Uh, typically we would want to have it on a external drive because that will allow us, or, you know, if it's offline, hackers assume we can't, um, get into those files, right? So typically companies have them like scheduled. I believe my company that I entered for it had it scheduled for like three times a day for the full server. Um, 
And these are all stored or for an organization, they may store them at a data center. So an offline data center that's remote um, just to ensure, um, you know, like let's say we back it up on like my computer, right? My computer gets hacked. Like they have access to all the backups, right? They can encrypt all the backups, right? And then we're, you know, kind of screwed, right? So it's important for um, organizations to have a data center that allows them for um, backups to be stored there. In terms of individual use though, um, it might be nice to have a hard disk for that, right? So let's say you have sensitive information on um, your computer. Um, you might wanna try something like a flash drive or another disk to store those backups on. Um, and again, you can do all of this. I wish I had a flash drive, but I, I don't, I should. Um, <laughs> but so feel free to hack me if you if you want to, but um, actually don't, but <laughs> um, yeah. So we would want this to be like physically separate from our actual, um, our actual computer, right? So ideally we would have a disc here or something to upload it to, um, but we do not, so we're not gonna proceed with that. But this is an option and it does come with Windows. There are other backup software such as, um, I believe Enable does a really good job of offline backups as well. Um, but this one is readily available if you have a Windows computer. Oh my gosh. Don't ignore your Windows security alerts, by the way. I mean, I am right now, but like <laughs> if you have a Windows or you're relying on Windows, um, don't, you should ignore it or any, literally any other notification as well. Um, okay, so we're gonna go into simulator setup. So again, this is um, from no before, um, pretty much what this is gonna do. Ooh, that's crazy. Hold up. Pretty much what this is gonna do is it's going to test, um, I believe 23 uh, levels of ransomware and viruses on my computer, and then give me a report pretty much. So we just installed this and you can try this on your computer as well. Um, ideally I would have tried this using Bitdefender or using Windows Defender and then Bitdefender. But again, like I said, uh, Bitdefender was unavailable. So we're gonna go ahead and launch this. And then this is free, by the way. So you can try this out if you want, if you want to test like an antivirus software that you have. Um, or yeah. So we can go ahead and check now. And we can see that I already enabled, since I already enabled, so yeah, start time 6 p.m. Sorry, my, my, my VM is somehow in. <laughs> Um, like European time. <laughs> uh, I tried changing it, but it just changes back to like 6, 6, 10 PM. So yeah, Lee really hacked my time zone. <laughs> I think that was like the biggest effect that it had on me. Um, yeah, so I already enabled protected file access. So theoretically this wouldn't um, affect those files, right? But let's just see here how this will go. Really living in the future, yeah, certainly. Um, it should take take like under. Oh, uh, I'm afraid we lost her. Yeah, I think League of Legends finally caught up to her. So, ladies and gentlemen, I can uh, assure you that uh, technical difficulties will be resolved. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry you are in good hands you're in good hands oh boy hey where'd I, eric go i think i think eric went off to uh make league of legends 2 and he uh he succeeded it seems he succeeded oh lord <laughs> um w w eric very uh interesting uh development in the plot trust me guys this is not scripted i swear but um let's see i'm gonna share like one last thing that i intended to show you guys while uh, uh pillar is um trying to unhack her computer 
Uh, let's see. Yep. Okay. The last thing I wanted to show you guys was corporations and how they defend um, against attacks. Um, very similarly to how we do, they also have like, you know, cyber security awareness and they don't really like, like they are also trained in the field to have like extra measures of like ensuring emails they receive are verified from work and like the workplace and not like um like a phishing email so a little breakdown on two things that i kind of believe are worth noting about is the intrusion detection or prevention systems ids and ips so starting with ids um it's basically just like how pillar was like being completely spammed with um the like oh there's like this for review for as an intrusion this just sent an alert when like a malicious network traffic is detected. Meanwhile, the IPS system uh, attempts to prevent and alert an identified uh, malicious activity. Now it sounds similar, but it's, it's different because like one is more so of like a scanning detection alert and the other one is more of a scan and prevent. So that's one important thing that corporations also have. And then there's endpoint detection and response EDR. Um, that one is a software or agents. So depending on the company, it can either have like a coding software that does this job or an actual person behind the screen um, kind of residing in the client and just providing like antivirus protection alerts um, and then like analysis as well as a threat triage. I, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Like triage, I can't say it, but prevent uh, like ignoring my broken English um it also is like threat intelligence capabilities so it kind of like scans to see if there's also a threat for that so those are two major things that corporations do and then there's a third one which i found pretty interesting and it's the fbi ransomware protocol where it's it's basically the fbi kind of telling you like you should not abide by the ransom so as we saw with like um eric and pilar's like example that was given to us he didn't really have a ransom on it when he encrypted Pilar's uh, data. But in most cases, there is going to be a ransom there. It's going to be like, hello, this is like Mr. Gentleman contacting you. I have encrypted your files. And if you would like them back, you would have to pay me $1,000. Example, right? And the FBI is essentially telling you, yeah, we get that your files are encrypted and that you have no access to it. But you should not abide by it because not only does it not guarantee you really getting your data back, it kind of just encourages this behavior and these attacks because it shows that they succeeded. So the FBI is kind of like, kind of like stick through it and then you'll be fine as long as like you manage to like reach out and like just make sure that your company isn't doing more um, like breaches with like the malicious uh, attack. And then you kind of just, shut down the root of the problem from spreading even further to other companies as well. So that was like kind of one other thing that I wanted to mention to you guys. Now, let's see. Is Pilar back by any chance? No. Ooh. Give me one second, guys. Okay. Hi, guys. <laughs> I'm back. All right. There we go. <laughs> the ransomware worked so well that it actually unplugged my laptop from its charger. So oh, uh, it doesn't actually do this, though. It doesn't actually do this. <laughs> uh, while you were gone, Pilar, mm -hmm. I just showed them the, the last slide that I had for the how uh, companies protect themselves from... Okay. So I just showed them that while you were figuring that one out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So while we were while we were while we were in our brief intermission, um, the scan did finish. Um, so we can see that a lot of this was not vulnerable. So meaning that nothing was encrypted on my uh, computer, and this is largely due to the. Oh, let's open that one. So I can click this one. Protected file access as well. 
So everything was pretty much blocked. But however, if we were to turn off file access so we can see everything is, I don't know, this isn't, this isn't nice stuff. This is just the test files that downloads with the, um, with no or with the ransom simulator. So we can see that everything looks mostly fine, right? This looks like actual, you know, data. So that's good, right? However, if we were to disable um, that ransomware, so we go to manage ransomware protection, let's turn off controlled file access, and then we can run this again as well. Uh, let's close that. Let's close all of this actually too. And then let's run as administrator again. I guess, oh, we don't install it before. Okay, no. Okay. Run as administrator. Let's agree to all the terms and everything. Keep in mind that this only really affects uh, the files that um, they gave us and they installed onto the computer as well. Go ahead and install, and then we're going to run the process again. So we're going to go ahead and launch it. And then we can check again. Um, hopefully my computer does not die. Seems to be charging, so that's good. Um, so while this is running, I wanted to go over um, something known as the MITRE attack frame. So even though like ransomware is um, just one of the types of different types of malware that we have, um, there are also you know a lot of other attack vectors that um, attackers can use against you. And it's important to know how they might, you know, uh, run through an attack, right? Um, so we can go over, we can just slowly go over. So reconnaissance, um, if you guys don't know what that means, it's, you know, if you ever heard of like somebody conducting like recon, pretty much you're just like scouting out and, hunt and scouting out any like vulnerability or any like vulnerabilities in the system beforehand. Right, seeing where, okay, so we're already getting, as we're going through scan, we're already getting um, some ransomware found, right? So we can go here. Oh no, severe. Oh my goodness. And yeah, so Windows Defender also gives you the option to quarantine each virus, each um, Trojan and each, any ransomware that, are, that is found, which is what we'll ideally want to do. Um, that will be mostly our first response in uh, the event of a ransomware attack is to quarantine, make, making sure that the files don't spread to our system. Um, and you can do this with Windows Defender and also Bitdefender, any antivirus software will have a quarantine option. Um, so with reconnaissance, uh, typically attackers will look for holes, look for anything to, um, sorry, anything to, um, that's like vulnerable, anything that's open, try to analyze like the, the system layout, how the like network works in the company that they're looking to hack or how or you know the current infrastructure of someone's personal computer as well. Um, and then yeah, so this website gives you a lot of like different resources for how attackers may um, you know use this, use each technique. So so resource development as well. You can go through that. Initial access, which is kind of all umbrellaed under um, kind of reconnaissance. And yeah, like Helen said, this is really helpful. Um, this is like this and something known as like cyber kill chain are very, very relevant in the terms of defending against cybersecurity. Because again, this gives you a outlook on, you know, we want to understand not only like do we want to understand how we can defend, we also want to understand the exact movements of um, an attacker, right? We want to kind of try and predict, right, what the attacker will do. Um, one of these cases, I want to um, emphasize the use of a backdoor, right? So if an attacker gains entry to, into your system, right, even though we may isolate this, uh, isolate any virus or any uh, malware that may be in our system, they may try to pivot, right? Um, backdoor means that they're opening another um, I guess, whole for your system to be compromised, right? So even though you're, you know, you think you're thinking that like, oh, you know, I'm isolating this, this uh, folder, or I'm isolating this like part of the system into one place, the attacker may already be one step ahead of you 
and already open another another entry point for the attacker to um, gain entry back in, even though you think like, oh, okay, I'm fine, right? Like this file is safe, everything looks good here. Um, no, like the attacker is already one step ahead of you. So this is why attack frameworks are important for uh, if you're looking to go into like endpoint protection, uh, this is why this is important. Um, yep, so we'll go down to execution, deployed, um, persistence, meaning that they're, you know, already starting to establish connections. Um, they're, you know, trying to, I guess, spread out as much as they can. Um, escalation, defense evasion. Okay, wait. Okay, looks like this is finished. So we can see that a good amount of our system was pretty compromised. We can go to Windows Defender and look at the um, kind of logs. So we can take action manually with this. Um, other software, like again, Bits Defender, Sophos, will do this automatically um, as they do have, um, what's it called? Um, like built-in protection and like, so if we go to the files that we were testing, I'll just go to this one. Let's see if it loads. <clears throat> oh, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> what went on here? Okay, but even though we can see like that our system was compromised with Windows Defender turned off pre pretty much on all of its like features like pretty much were rendered obsolete. Um, but I would highly suggest like if you have an antivirus on um, your computer to test this out, right? Um, and this is free again, so I can link it in chat as well. Uh, if you guys are curious about this, you can also test it against um, if you guys any of you have like Mac OS. Um, you can do that as well. Mac OS also has built-in uh, antivirus, so we can test against that as well. Um, Windows Defender is just, you know, for Windows. I mean, if you're using that, then um, it's kind of like the default version of it. So, um, and then again, to reiterate, backups are like the number one thing that you should have. Like, if you're going to like, you know, if you want to protect yourself, like Afi, mm, I think it was like really huge before. <laughs> and I think like it has like been criticized. It has been like criticized a lot in the recent years. Um, I'm pretty, they're still like developing. So, I mean, I'm sure you can do your own research on like what you recommend. Uh, I personally have Bitdefender installed on my computer uh, or my work computer at all. Norton 360 is a good option too. If we pretty much just look up like best antivirus to install, like we can we can kind of gauge like what kind of protection we want, right? So we can look up like top antivirus software, right? Um, and don't click on any of these because they're like, let's just do PC Mag. PC Mag's pretty cool. Yeah, so Bitdefender. Webroot, oh, there you go, McAfee. Um, Node, Malwarebytes is good too. It's a pretty big name. Um, Norton Antivirus here as well. You kind of have to like do research on what exactly you want out of the antivirus because all of them have like, are, all of them are similar, right? But a lot of them have different features that might interest you more than, um, you know, some of the other things. Um, so it's kind of like, you want to understand what is best for you. And of course, like the price range is a, is a big thing too. A lot of these antivirus um, can be quite expensive, right? But there's also like free trials of it too. Um, pretty much it's, you just wanna be proactive about protecting your files because once ransomware is in your system or any virus, any malware at all, um, and you don't have like a backup, right? Or you don't have, um, you know, something to, to, to kind of, save you, I guess. Um, it's, you know, it's not like, oh, okay, I'll just, you know, go kill myself. Oh, shoot, I should not say that. But it's not like, you know, you can just like throw away your computer, like, I don't want to do this anymore, right? Um, 
it's it's just better to be proactive about this, right? And companies like a lot of times like install like have or they have like cloud backups or they have um you know these <laughs> antivirus um protections in them already just for uh these reasons alone. They'll often perform like disaster recovery tests as well, or it is also um like a great idea for a company to hire a um, like penetration tester to test against their system, find any holes, find any vulnerabilities. Um, their cybersecurity is such like a great, um, there's, it's such a growing field because there's so, it's like a constant war, right? Like, like it's, we're like constantly being like attacked, right? There's constantly the threat of being attacked. There have been like so many different cases. Like even if we look up like, ransomware in the news yeah no like this is insane right and this isn't even everything right this isn't even the known ones like this isn't like there's multiple ransomware attack attacks a day and that's not limited to companies like organizations may be like the um you know bigger target but ultimately um ransomware and malware in specific can affect everybody right um let me see if there's any questions. Only Mac OS Big Sur has built an Antivirus software yet. Catalina's outdate, yeah, vulnerable to malware. Yeah, so I mean, if you have any of these systems, like it's really important to update your uh, computer. I know it may be annoying. Like I know in my Mac, like I struggle with like, you know, freeing up storage, right? Um, on my computer for that. Um, but it's kind of something that you have to, you, you, you really should consider. It's not just like, Oh, like, you know, I don't really like the interface of, um, you know, Big Sur or what's, I don't know the new one, uh, Mont Monterey or something, but um, it's not just like a, you know, UI, you know, I don't really, I don't really like the UI, whatever. No, it's about, it's, it's about like, you know, cybersecurity. You got to think of it in a cybersecurity perspective as well, right? So... Um, I'm going to move on to our next section, which is the section that you all may be waiting for. <laughs> it is our Kahoot section. Yay. So let me get started here with setting up the course. Okay. Ventura is the newest Mac OS. Yep. Okay, that's the word I was looking for. Thank you. So yeah, I mean, main takeaways, like I would highly encourage you to uh, look into, you know, antivirus software for yourself, right? Because there could be something that you might miss, right? That Windows Windows Defender will miss that, and you can just see like a ton of like the the flaws that Windows Defender has, um, and look in, into alternative antivirus software if that's you know something of your concern. Okay. And while Pilar is doing that, I'm just gonna put the sign in sheet. One last yeah. time. Um, I highly encourage you guys to not forget this uh, for whoever has signed in yet. But you really should give it a sign, please. Because this also, as I said earlier, um, finishes up your two uh, required workshop meetings in mm -hmm. order to become a full member of AIS. And also, like that, you can stay informed and inside the circle so that you don't miss out one of these workshops. And then you can find out whether next time It'll be me or Eric that gets jumped out of the Zoom call through ransomware attacks. <laughs> yeah, it really got me, honestly. <laughs> I actually like thought I was like, once we have two events to be like, we should be like, um, I'm not sure. Is Kevin still here? Kevin, can you answer that? I'm really sure how that works. Is Kevin still here? um if he's not i will get back to oh he's here maybe, I will maybe, get back maybe, to yeah, maybe maybe not. maybe not <laughs> we'll, we'll get back, we'll get to, back you to you on that you. one yeah, for sure yeah i believe you should 
I want to say. Patrick Pan. Okay, yeah, definitely get back to you. Um, yeah, so this Kahoot is pretty much just a recap on ransomware. Um, some of it's like, you know, maybe something that we didn't cover, but you can, you know, try and guess. Um, either way, it's a good way to kind of um, retest your skills. Could we have a confirm information by Discord instead? Um, sure. I mean, if you go to Discord and you attend, like you attend two workshops and then you check your Discord, um, if you see that you don't have your member role there, you should like mention that in general or somewhere like support because mm -hmm. you should have it by two workshops yeah. so long as you signed in because we need the sign that's why we need the sign-in sheets so that it's proof that you attended it and yeah. that stuff um yeah if, sorry okay yeah kevin um i'm not sure if they get a confirmation email or if they get a discord notification that they uh are now a member and that have fulfilled like the requirements of being a member for AIS. Like, do they get, uh, like, what they'll get a notification on Discord or email? Oh, uh, they'll get an ad. Oh, nice. Okay, awesome. That's cool. I didn't know that. <laughs> okay, I'll just give it a few more minutes for people to join. It's a short, very short ransomware quiz. Um, but yeah. Kevin C. We jumped you in the leadership. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Yeah. <laughs> when I got the notification, I was like, oh, like, I guess I am a member. True. But yeah, please make sure you fill out the form. This is one of the last events of the semester. Um, so if you're looking to be a member, please do so. Okay, 15 people. Um, I'll give it, I'll give it, I'll give them one more minute. So 135 will begin. And then please feel free to like reach out for like any questions or. Um, uh, Pilar, you're taking yeah. uh, CIS 3400 with Holozak? Yeah, that, that's me. I'm in there. Nice. Nice. You're in there as well? I actually took him uh, spring. Oh, you took him last spring. Nice. Cool. Yeah. He's a great professor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Best, probably best professor in Baruch for CIS. I'm sure. Like, I don't know. I I, I feel like a lot of people in AIS like can vouch for that. Honestly. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I, I agree yeah. There. yeah. Plus, um, he is plugging our club up. So. Yeah. Yep. He's a very, I don't know. Probably best prof professor I've college professor I've taken. He's the GOAT. MVP of AIS. Yeah. Halzak is definitely the goat, 100%. Okay, we can go ahead and begin. Okay, so I believe you can still join after. Okay. So first question is, how can a ransomware attack occur? So is it phishing emails, drive-by downloading, which is pretty much what um, Eric sent me? or a Trojan disguise as a file. Thank you, Gavin. Here's a little piece for <laughs> It's actually all of the above, right? So a ransomware attack can be administered like through a multitude of things, right? Go ahead and click next. Which file extension is the most dangerous? So is it? .docx, PowerPoint, an Excel file, uh, executable file, JSON, or a batch file, or all files are legit and are safe at all times, or are they dangerous? Yeah, it's gonna be all files are dangerous. So even though these look familiar, right? So X, uh, so this is like the Word doc for Microsoft or uh, PowerPoint for, Office 365, um, everything is capable of being dangerous, right? So even if you, you like open something, that puts you at a vulnerability, right? Yeah, can embed shell code and PDF and document files? Yep, 100%, right? So literally any attachment that it might ask you to download or even open, um, you may always preview if you would like, right? Um, that's a good 
case to see if it's actually legit or just don't open it, honestly. Um, only open like files from trusted sources, right? Uh, it's a huge problem if you're just opening any random file on the internet because we're unsure if it's actually uh, safe or not. And yes, like antivirus will, you know, any software that you install, Windows Defender, whatever, uh, it may be your, uh, <laughs> yeah, not opening for Rustage PDF. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, like it may, <laughs> lost my train of thought from that. <laughs> Um, yeah, like it may look fine, right? It may look legit, but you never know, right? So it's always better to uh, only open from trusted sources. Okay. What's with professors making slides using PDFs? Because this is like, um, people can't change it, I guess. True or false, paying the ransom to hackers guarantees you that you will get your data back after a ransomware attack. Is this true or is it wrong? It's gonna be false, yeah. So a lot of times like there'll be like, you know, attack or cases of an attacks where um, somebody may, uh, you know, send you a ransomware and then they're like, hey, give me five, I don't know, five Bitcoins um, to get your data back. And then you pay the five Bitcoins, hoping that like, oh, okay. Like, you know, that's not that much to me. I can pay it, whatever. Um, and then oftentimes they'll, they'll just, you know, not keep your promise. Even if they say like, oh, I pinky promise. No, <laughs> don't do that. Even the pinky promise? Yeah. They're, they're, not, they're not moral like that. They don't. Okay, so what does the FBI advise to do in case of a ransomware attack? Is it try to send ransomware back to the attacker? Well, this would be kind of cool, right? Uh, turn off your computer. Uh, do not pay the ransom or pay the ransom or negotiate with the attacker. Actually, trying to send ran send back ransomware. Kind that's, of valid. That, that's on like some like, demon timing stuff there. Yeah. <laughs> like send it back. If you're trying to uh, send a hacker ransomware from a hacker, it's going to be a battle. <laughs> That'd be kind of funny. <laughs> Do not pay the ransom. Yep. So it is advised by the FBI themselves that uh, attackers, uh, or no, I'm sorry, if you are a victim of ransomware, to not pay the ransom. Um, yeah. I, I also like the person who said, turn off your computer. <laughs> Just throw it away, honestly. <laughs> out of sight, out of yeah. mind. <laughs> you know, I don't want to deal with this. <laughs> um, yeah. So do not pay the ransom, uh, mainly for a multitude of reasons, right? Because one, it kind of, enables more ransomware attack attacks to happen right so if they pay the ransom it's like oh okay i'll get money this way and again like the previous question was like um it's not a guarantee that you'll get your data back right so if you pay the ransom you kind of have the chance well one you're losing money and then another one you might not get your data back so uh it's always best not to pay the ransom you kind of have to pivot around it whether it's um bringing in like a cybersecurity expert um, contacting FBI, et cetera, or, you know, even hitting them with the Uno reverse of <laughs> sending ransomware back. And that's why it's also important to have um, a backup, right? Anthony Rizgod, he's killing it. Bro, is oh, too right. strong. He has Riz Godhood and is proficient in <laughs> CIS. That's a crazy combo. All right, next question is, uh, MFA is considered an additional layer of defense helping to slow or, or stop ransomware attacks. What is the purpose of MFA? So is it password protection, backup strategy, identity verification, um, or incident response? And it is identity verification. So MFA is known as multi-factor authentication. Um, if we see, I don't know if you guys have heard of like Duo Mobile, um, basically when you sign into something, companies may opt for multi-factor authentication and believe Facebook has this now. Um, so basically it just gives like another confirmation uh, that this is you. Uh, Google, is probably, Google is probably the best example that I can use. Yes, Stony Brook uses it. Google authentication codes is a, is a um, example of MFA, pretty much uh, oh, Apple as well, if you have an iPhone. Um, you'll be able to, uh, if you sign in anywhere else, you will have to confirm it on another device. Um, 
to the general again. trend if i may is also that recently a lot of um like almost everything that hasn't had uh two-factor authentication is implementing two-factor authentication yeah. as of late especially i've noticed that yeah and even with like uh like i believe when i worked at a hospital um we had to swipe our badge and then we also had to um give our fingerprint right um so and this is like required right so it just pretty much serves as an identity verification make sure that this is really you um and you can confirm this in a multitude of ways another way people may use is like tokens so um if any of you have experience with like Bloomberg Terminal, in order to access that, um, you need a specific like physical, um, I don't know, it's like a it's like a rectangle. <laughs> I don't know, it's like a little key. It's kind of cool. Um, key drive, yeah. Um, so a lot of times people use this. Doesn't we use two factor two? <laughs> yeah, USB key, yeah. So very important. I know it may be annoying and like a little bit tedious, but it is like ultimately like one of the best ways to protect um, your identity. New quiz. What is the fastest way to recover data? Pay the ransom as soon as possible. Try to decrypt the uh, encry or encrypted files manually. Allocate a portion of your savings account for ransomware attacks or archive inactive data and create a storage lifecycle. Yep, so this is going to be archive and active data and create a storage lifecycle. Um, again, like I've been emphasizing, backups are 100%, like will probably be your best friend in any case of um, a cyber attack, right? Because these attackers are pretty much trying to uh, get your data, right? And if your data is kind of stored away somewhere else, whether it's like a data center, USB, uh, another disk, um, this will create like an easier time for you to recover data, right? And again, want to emphasize the use of offline backups as well and cloud backups, right? Uh, storage life cycle, I just mean like creating like a schedule. I'm gonna go to the next question. Security companies launched an anti-ransomware site known as No More Ransom. How have cyber criminals reacted to this? By creating a ransomware titled Yes More Ransom with ransomware that changes extensions from to no more ransom after encrypting, they just stopped using ransomware, like they solved, completely done. Don't pick this one. Uh, by attacking the security companies with the ransomware. This is more, we didn't cover this for sure, but the answer is no more ransom. Um, so after this is created, there is a multitude of more um, you know, ransomware is titled no more ransom, not even to the security companies uh, that were, um, what's it called? That created the site. You can go to the site right now, I believe. No more ransom, that word. So pretty much this is just like a bunch of security companies and uh, law institutions developed the site just to um, provide other companies with resources uh, preventions, right? Uh, there's a ton of like decryptor keys on here as well from known ransomwares. Uh, pretty cool. You can look on this website for more information if you are interested in learning more about ransomware and how it works. Um, ah, where were we? Oh, here. Okay. Um, but yeah. Ooh. Pretty competitive. Okay, true or false? As long as you have backups, you will be safe from ransomware. Yeah. This is actually the backup. <laughs> you guys got my joke. Now this is a high quality sense of humor. <laughs> Yeah, so this isn't necessarily true. Uh, even though backups like allow you to recover data at a quicker rate and give you that like extra sense of uh, protection, right? Extra sense of like security. Okay, I know that I, you know, even if I get attacked by ransomware, at least I have this backup. However, who's to say that the attacker 
doesn't attack the backup, right? It's very possible for backups to be encrypted, especially when we're uh, doing live backups as well. If the, so let's say that we're, that this file, like file A has been encrypted, right? Um, and then the backup cycle runs, file A is gonna run as a backup, or I'm sorry, is gonna be, uh, be the encrypted version of the backup, so. I was gonna say like, remember guys, they're called viruses, right? So much like disease, disease is spread. So yeah. it, depending on the virus type, just because you have a backup, if you click on it, the data you have on your PC does connect to your backups. So if it is that type of malicious program, it will infect itself into your backup data as well. Yeah. What if you hit undo? <laughs> you know what? Yeah. <laughs> you have like a five second rule on that one. You, you just, have to realize just, it. You just restart your computer, actually. <laughs> Cloud has become a more popular option to protect backups from ransomware because the cloud is easy to scale. Cloud applications are often, oh, sorry, office networks. Uh, cloud vendors offer support for cloud backup networks. I believe this is supposed to say offline, sorry. But yes, it is all of the above. Um, cloud is probably the most popular way because cloud. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is uh, all of these. Uh, methods are why cloud is the most popular option. Uh, it's easy, right? Um, anybody can, you know, have a cloud backup. You don't require like an external like flash drive or a hard disk. Um, and they're pretty easy to manage. And yes, easy to scale as well. Yeah. All right, Kevin C. Let's go, Kevin. All right, final question. The most commonly attacked institution is government organizations, schools or universities, financial institutions, or hospital and healthcare facilities. Did my hospital use a private cloud model or hybrid? And it is gonna be hospitals or in healthcare facilities. Yeah, destroyed. Yeah. Only oh God, only two people. That's crazy. Um, yeah, so this is more of just like a stat question. Hospitals and healthcare facilities are often uh, the main target of ransomware attacks just because um, the data that they keep is like, if that were to be lost um, or stolen, right? First of all, it's a high, um, like it's very, very, very sensitive, right? Attackers can sell this and sell these types of data for, um, big bucks and hospitals often end up paying the ransom because of how sensitive the data um, the data is, right? Uh, well, working at a hospital, do you have access to Epic? No, I use Cerner. Uh, I wish I used Epic. Epic's a lot nicer. Epic and Cerner are basically um, like patient care, like, I don't know, databases. Oh, Broman and Who's the final winner? Derek, word. Let's go. Good job, guys. Congratulations, Some guys. Winner ups as well. Cool. Okay. Um, bro man, can you give me your actual name if you don't mind? <laughs> oh, okay, that's you. Okay, word. Okay. Um, I will contact you shortly after um this event, but. Yeah, these are the most difficult questions, but um, that pretty much concludes the majority of this workshop. I mean, um, really appreciate everybody that came out and um, kind of bared with me through the difficulties as well. Um, this was my first workshop for AIS, so I was a bit nervous, but um, I think it went well, and I hope you guys enjoyed the event. Um, yeah, so... Thank you for attending. You may leave if you want. I know this event was supposed to go till 2.30. Uh, it was planned uh, till 2.30, but um, we're going to end it here. So you are welcome to leave. Don't forget to fill out any of the forms that were sent, especially the membership forms. Um, I'll set that out one last time as well. Yeah. Just and... remember to sign in. And I would yeah. also like to thank you guys as well for attending. I hope yeah. you guys learned something. This was also my first workshop for AIS. So <laughs> I was like, I don't know how this was going to go. So this is actually my first time even using Zoom, actually. So in what? this way, <laughs> oh. in this way, in this way, like as a host and like uh -oh. the meeting, I was like, 
un, like nervous about that. Yeah. I was like, I was like, what if no one can join in the Zoom call? <laughs> Holy sh- okay. <laughs> I guess yeah. Honestly, to to be honest, we uh did not t- we only tested over Discord. <laughs> That like is we did true. not test over, over Zoom. I realized that like this morning, I was like, shoot, wait. This was <laughs> completely this, like, free balled. <laughs> completely free balled. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that, that yeah. is it from me as well. I'd like to thank yeah. you guys and I hope you guys enjoyed the workshop. And I look forward to seeing you in future workshops if you will be we joining stay, us. We can stay here for a little bit just for, I don't know, any questions or, I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to just pause the recording since we're done to, yeah. with today. Yeah, for sure.